Postmates is working with California labor groups to basically avoid the fate that Uber and Lyft are probably inevitably going to find themselves in. However, critics aren't necessarily convinced that they're sincere. Hey everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur. Now, we talked a few days ago about the, um, in Portland, Oregon, I believe it was, how Postmates drivers were going on a blitz up protest to, well, protest Postmates cutting their wages from like four fifty a delivery to 3.30 or something like that. I, I mean, I'd have to watch the video again. Again, so much stuff to read today. And one of the things that I commented on, what, aside from the fact that it definitely falls into a gray area because they're de basically doing surge manipulation for Postmates, except again, as an independent contractor, you're technically allowed to do that, but it's against the policy. Well, one of the things that Postmates did was, unlike Uber and Lyft, they didn't threaten to fire anyone or deactivate any of the Postmates people. No, no, no. They actually said that they want to meet with them to discuss what they could do to make them happy. Even though I think it's pretty obvious, like, uh, take away the price cut and they might be a little bit happier. That's obviously what, you know, started this whole protest thing. And I think you should backtrack on that a little bit. Well, anyway, Postmates is doing more than just talking to the couriers. They are talking to California labor groups to keep independent contractors. However, as it says in the headline, the critics aren't sold. It is a remarkable shift from the historically contentious relationship with organized labor. Gig companies are negotiating with unions to potentially extend benefits to their hundreds of thousands of California workers, as long as the companies can continue to classify them as contractors. And by the way, we're going to be talking about Uber and Lyft on this in the next video, so this is technically a two-part video. Postmates, an app based food and grocery delivery platform, began meeting with labor groups more than a year ago. Vice President of Global Public Policy Vikram Iyer told Cap Radio the first time Postmates has spoken publicly about its intentions. Earlier this week, ride-hailing companies Uber and Lyft published an op-ed announcing a similar effort. They're all hoping to influence a pending bill at the state capitol that would convert their workers to employees. The legislation would codify a California Supreme Court ruling last year known as the Dynamics decision that made it harder for many companies, including Uber, Lyft, and Postmates, to classify workers as independent contractors. Proponents say the bill would guarantee essential benefits for workers like health care, coverage, and unemployment insurance. Gig, company, gig companies and business groups argue it would eliminate worker flexibility, which is critical to their business model. A study last year found more than 10% of California, Californians participate in the gig economy makes sense, especially in like the LA areas where it can be busy pretty much all the time. Iyer says the talks between Postmates and labor groups have focused on three goals, establishing a standard-based wage, contributing to a benefits fund, and giving contractors more input on workplace conditions. And by the way, this is actually all very good. I agree. Like, here's the thing. I do want the companies to come to the table personally to work on these issues. Now, here's where they're all making fatal mistakes, and we warned them about this for years. We told them, we want to work with you. We want to be your partners. We want, you know, we just want you to pay us a little bit better. You, We want us, you to give us a say in how we work. We don't want you to deactivate us. You don't want, we don't want a lack of due process when we get deactivated. You know, and some people, not all, but some people would even put away some of the earnings for benefits if given the choice. And... Postmates, just like Uber and Lyft, could have solved this problem themselves years ago, but they chose not to. No, they choose until there is a bill that will force them to reclassify all their gig workers as employees. That's when they start taking this very, very seriously. It's not because, you know, we were right. It's not because they had an epiphany. It's not because they realized they were doing us wrong. It's because they don't want to get regulated. And here's the thing. What are they promising to do if they don't get regulated, we'll give you benefits and stuff. And yet that's what the bill will do. That's what the bill will do. Which brings the question, why are you fighting it? Well, we all know why they're fighting it. I mean, I can't say it because I don't want to be um, sued for uh, slander by Postmates, but trust us, we all know why you're fighting it. Anyway, um, where, where was I? Oh yeah, Iyer says the talks between Postmates and labor groups have focused on, oh, sorry, we already... We already did that. According to Iyer, the company is considering a proposal to create a new classification of worker, something between a traditional employee and an independent contractor. I am not opposed to this, by the way. Quote, the goal is to contemplate a new class of work, one that is able to honor the flexibility and the short-term nature of people on our platform, but also one that also stacks. 
um, worker protections and benefits on top of earnings. I, I notice how they never talk about more earnings. It's always benefits. And uh, here's the thing. How many people are going to stick around long enough to get benefits from this? I, I think that's something that's worth considering. In an interview with Cap Radio, uh, Lorena Gonzalez, hey, uh, I think I've met her, who, uh, who introduced Assembly Bill 5 to codify the Dynamics decision, signaled there may be a narrow possibility of reaching an agreement with gig companies. But so far, she says their proposals fall short. Quote, I have yet to hear from these companies anything that would truly provide taxpayers protection from subsidizing these companies or workers empowerment on the job. Gonzalez said, arguing that the state is currently forced to subsidize health care and other benefits that ought to be provided by employees. For years, gig companies staved off efforts to unionize workers by lobbying city councils, state legislators, and federal regulators to classify workers as independent contractors instead of employees. Um, yeah, and one of the reasons they were able to successfully stave it off is because the workers actually, you know, joined them in a sense. They, uh, they, they fought the good fight. They protest. They uh, protested against the government getting involved in the gig economy. Well, a few years later, gig economy didn't take care of them, so they're like, "Screw it, we want government intervention." That's how it happened. Don't don't blame don't blame the drivers, blame the companies. But big gig companies have suffered from some notable defeats. And yeah, okay. Anyway, um, Iyer shared some insight into the potential deal points between Postmates and labor groups, but said the negotiations remain fluid. The company proposed pay standard would set a minimum wage for hours on the platform, something guaranteed to employees under state law, but not independent contractors. Postmates would also pay into a proposed benefits fund, which would go toward things like health care coverage, accident insurance, and long-term savings. Okay, sounds good. Defining worker voice, according to Iyer, has been the most challenging aspect of the negotiations with labor groups. Iyer says Postmates wants to give workers a platform to share input on workplace standards and how the company functions but it's unclear if that means full collective bargaining, a hallmark of unionization. Uh, Steve Smith, spokesperson for the California Labor Federation, has not been directly involved in negotiations, but he says achieving full employee status for these workers remains the goal of labor groups, and the two sides appear to be very far apart in the negotiations. I, I would not be surprised because, basically, yeah, I mean, ignoring even just the benefits. People want more money. That's the bottom line. And Postmates, Uber, Lyft, they are unwilling to do that they could they could also raise they could raise what they're charging the customers and they could pay the drivers that way they don't want to do that they, they might lose some market share at least for a little while i believe those people would eventually come back but that's why they're not going to do it so um gonzalez didn't shut the door completely on agreement with gig companies that would spare them from the requirements under her bill quote i can imagine a world where we created a new standard that preserved their rights as an independent contractor and all of that would be bargained for in an enforceable contract with a union but gonzalez added this new standard would require quote a new state bureaucracy and more concessions from gig companies the benefits funds for example would have to approach 30 percent of a worker's salary for her to be on board she adds that bona fide collective bargaining would be key to any agreement with gig companies anything that's not collective bargaining is collective begging she said i agree Iyer says Postmates and Labor would prioritize working with Gonzalez through her existing bill if they reach an agreement, but he did not rule out the possibility of a separate piece of legislation carried by another lawmaker. Iyer declined to state which unions Postmates has been working with or when a deal may be reached. So there you go. Postmates is working. Doesn't look like there's any deal anytime soon, and the bill will most likely go through, be signed, and, well, then we're going to have to see whether or not they actually want to stick around in California. I'll talk about whether or not the gig companies will actually consider leaving California in another video, maybe tomorrow. I, I think that should be an editorial video, or maybe in the next video. Who knows? I, we'll kind of see where it goes. Anyway, I would like to know what you think about this. Do you trust Postmates to actually effectively be sincere, argue uh, for you know, a partnership with the lawmakers? Do you think they're sincere? Or do you think their proposals fall way, way short? Personally, I'd love to know. So, you know the drill. Comment below. Like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you enjoy my videos, consider becoming a Patreon member. It's totally optional, of course, but even as little as $1 a month goes a long way to helping the channel run smoothly and you get access to my Patreon's exclusive blog. Also, check us out at the Afterpreneur Vlogs channel where we have different content but more. Uh, yeah, we're putting more content, but it's very different from what this is. If gas prices are getting you a little down, check out the GetUp site app below. It's totally free, but you get cash back on every gas purchase. And if you want to talk to me or other fellow rideshare, 
drivers, check us out at the Appreneur Hangout on Facebook. And as always, blame responsibly. Have a good one.